Hey y'all, and good morning. Uh, this morning we're gonna be planting a shade garden under this crab apple at the back of our home. Uh, this would probably be considered a part sun garden. It's gonna be majority shade. Uh, get shade all through the morning, and then it's covered by this crab apple that has a pretty big canopy in the afternoon. And in the evening, I took some pictures to show you on the screen. There is some dappled uh, sun here before the sun goes behind the barn across from me here and i've got some really beautiful things some from my prior garden that i dug up uh, some that i picked up from proven winners when i was there in july uh, some things that great garden plants sent out to me uh, other things i acquired at local garden center so all sorts of goodies i am also planting all of the h's you can't have a good shade or part shade garden without the h's and that includes hosta aconocloa uh, hookra. What else we got in here? Um, hellebores. I think that's all the H's maybe. We got ferns. We got uh, anemones. Hydrangeas. Oh, there's an H. I got a dogwood and a sun king aurelia and some carex and some ajuga. Uh, and we'll go over those right quick. I am really excited about the combination of things I have here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over all these plants with you and I'm going to put this in time lapse and just kind of show you how I lay them out and how I'm designing them. Uh, as you know, this bed was full of a ground creeper called Euonymus. I think it was gold, emerald and gold, I think was the variety when I found the tag that was ripped out. But you can see all of these beautiful things here. So some of them are plugs that I ordered online wholesale with my accounts. Uh, I got a lot of hostas that Great Garden Plants sent out to me. Uh, I reached out to them because I buy a ton of plants from them, and I used to in my old garden as well. And they were kind enough to say, hey, we'll sponsor a few plants for you. So I'll go over all of these first. Uh, this is Love Story Hosta. It's a really beautiful variegated variety. And a lot of these in here are in the Proven Winners Collection, and they're tiny but they will grow in just fine. This one's called Above the Clouds, and I'll show a picture on the screen, or actually, let me just pull this out right here. Look how beautiful blue that is right there. So this is a really exciting one that's gonna get pretty big uh, that I can put maybe at the forefront or mix in with some other items. This one looks like we no water slide, so it's a little crinkly, uh, which is really beautiful. We have, Empress Wu, which I had at my last garden, and it was my favorite hosta. They get ginormous, and it will be a really good statement piece in this part sun uh, shade garden here. Hudson Bay, which also has some nice variegation. We've got Wiggles and Squiggles, so it's another squiggly one. This one is really beautiful too. It's called Seducer. I think it gets pretty tall. You can see how upright that is there with nice yellow variegation. And then we have one more called June. Now this is one of my favorites as well. It's one of the first hostas that I actually purchased to put in my last garden. I think the variegation is just really striking. It's like a blue rather than a green. It may not show so much in the camera here, but when these start growing on and developing in your garden, it's very different from other variegation. You can see there how nicely colored that is. We have lots of ferns. Some of these I have in my old garden. I'm actually going to be digging or taking one out of a container to plant in this garden. I'm not sure that I'll be doing it in this video, but this one's called Lady in Red. And it's something kind of close that I could find to like a Boston fern. That's an annual in your garden that I wanted to put in the ground. So it's kind of similar in texture, color, all that good stuff. So it'll be really pretty to fill this space with some of those. There's a lot of them here. Not all of them are going to go here. Um, as I mentioned, we are doing geothermal. So I'm going to plant up that space up there after all of this compressor and everything comes out because that won't be needed anymore. So I'm not going to plant all of them today in this bed. I'll save some over for other areas that are very more shaded because that's north side of the house. This is Carex uh, Everillo, I think it's called, or Evergold, all gold. Uh, this is a really nice one, really easy to care for in your garden. This is Crested Surf, and it's a fern. It has a really interesting 
fronds here at the end. We have Autumn Brilliance Fern, which is a really nice one. It's already starting to change its fall color. Uh, these ferns are green throughout the year, but in autumn, uh, as it cools down, they start turning this uh, reddish color, yellow reddish. And so you can see the little variegation or the little color change right here that's happening. This is an ajuga. Now, before the ajuga police come, I always mention this because ajuga is a ground cover. You buy it for it being a ground cover. Uh, and that's what a lot of people want. Sometimes it may not be what you want. And if you're buying it and not realizing that it's a ground cover, that's a problem. But in areas where you don't want to have to mulch all the time, because this is kind of be a hard place, you can't come in and dump mulch, you're going to have to carry it, or I'm going to have to carry it in here. I'm going to plant some ground covers around this crab apple, the base of it and stuff. This is a really beautiful ajuga. I had it in my last garden and I fell in love with it and ordered flats and flats and flats of it because it almost can substitute in the spring for a blooming bulb. It just has a proliferation of these gorgeous blue-purple flowers. They're really kind of deep blue, dark purple. So it's called blueberry muffin, and I don't think that it spreads quite as prolifically as some of the older varieties of ajuga, but it's still really gorgeous and is a nice ground cover for you if you're looking for a ground cover in sun or shade. It does really well in both. And right here, you can't see it so much, but the foliage does get a little darker um, than it is right now. It's kind of similar to, I think it's called chocolate chip. Um, as far as the foliage color, but since it's been grown in a greenhouse and kind of probably packed together a little bit, it's not exhibiting that foliage color right now. Now, I have some Hakanakloa here. This is called All Gold. Uh, it is one of my favorites. Hakanakloa, uh, I can't regularly find it in the garden center. I know locally Grandma's Gardens carries it. And I don't know why it's really hard to find, because I love it, and it is perfect for a shade garden. There's one called Macro, which I've never grown, that's kind of a limey green. There's a variegated version. You know, I planted a new variety called Lemon Zest, that's also a variegated version. I tend to love the all gold version, because it pairs nicely with hostas as a contrast of color. And so I'm always looking at pairing interesting colors together, so we don't just have a sea of same color anything in here to provide both texture in the garden because it can stay over winter and kind of move around with the wind. It does turn brown, uh, but also to provide color contrast, which is really important when designing garden spaces. We have a Sun King Aurelia, which, you know, I planted one of those right down there. Uh, beautiful shade perennial that almost takes um, or becomes almost like a shrub in its later years as it continues to develop. It can get quite large, three to four foot tall and wide every season and dies completely to the ground. But it is a beautiful pop of color, kind of like the Hakanakloa in a shade bed. We have a mix of hellebores that I ordered in a flat. Uh, this is the wedding party series. I miss hellebores from my old garden, and so I had to get them in my garden this year. I wasn't expecting to be able to get them at all this fall, but they had some left over, which is kind of unusual. Um, and so I'm going to deck out this space in hellebores. Probably put some up there as well, so I don't know if I'll plant all of them in this space. And then we have some hookera. I'll go over those next. This one's called Toffee Tart. Oh no, this is Hopscotch. This is the one I had along the sidewalk at the other house, I am pretty sure. So it's green, but all the new foliage is orange, and it's a really beautiful hookera to mix in with different colors. These are new ones that I did not have in my last garden, uh, and they get pretty large, I think. This one's called Ball Gown. Uh, really beautiful. It's part shade plant. And this one's called Evening Gown. So it's similar to Black Pearl, which I had in my last garden. The leaves are really, really dark purple um, on the back sides and then almost black on the front because it's so dark. So really nice contrast there. If you're a gardener that's been gardening for a pretty long time and you've grown hookahs before, I would say, and you didn't have good luck with them, I would say give, give Proven Winners varieties a try. I have tried different varieties that are not Proven Winners and they don't tend to thrive as well. Proven Winners has done a really good job of breeding from really good stock um, and parent plants, and so these are really persistent and come back year after year. They don't tend to slow down and dwindle. If you want something that's going to even push the envelope a little more, consider a Hookerella, 
those are a hybrid between Hukra and Tiarella. Uh, one of my favorites is Red Rover from the Proven Winners Collection. Prolific. Just massive. Grows really quickly. Uh, can take full sun, believe it or not. Uh, and just does a really, really good job. We have some hydrangeas here. This one's Tough Stuff uh, Top Fun, which I showed you in a video a while back. It was not blooming, but look how gorgeous these blooms are now that it's blooming out. Also like the dark foliage here. Nice contrast. This was the Let's, Let's Dance Lovable. The blooms are also still looking pretty good. I could come and deadhead these a little bit, these older blooms, if I wanted to. These are reblooming macrophyllas, so you typically don't cut on them for risk of ruining the blooms for next year but since they do rebloom if you need to cut on them which i would not recommend you should still get blooms out of them they will just be later in the season probably around the july point or depending on where you live in the united states maybe a little earlier but as you can see it's continuing to produce new buds which is a good sign for this variety both of them are you can see those there back here we have some more hostas uh, this one I'm really excited about. It's really pretty. It's called Edged Glass. This is from the Proven Winners Collection here. Uh, it is a little wrinkly, which is nice for the texture compared to regular hostas, and the variegation is really pretty. We have this really big one right here that's called um, Cathedral Windows. Really nice big leaves there, and I looked for some bigger hostas at the store. Bigger hostas are kind of hard to find sometimes uh, to give some instant impact to this area since I'm planting a lot of smaller things, and that's what I came up with. This is a variegated dogwood called Golden Shadows. This one has been through a lot, and I really like it's kind of prostrate. It kind of grows up and grows out, so it's very... Uh, the habit's not as upright as it is kind of horizontal. This one came to me in a 4-inch container. Uh, over two years ago, uh, I received it online from Proven Winners, and it grew in a container for its first year to grow out a little bigger. And then last year, I planted it in the landscape, and then I moved it in this past spring in the landscape, and then I wanted it because they're hard to find here so bad that I dug it up and brought it with me. So it's moved a lot of times. It's not put on a ton of growth because it's been in some very stressful conditions, but it has persevered. So I'm really excited about it. And I'm probably gonna put this one kind of where it sits now. Might bump it up a little further uh, and let it just grow up and out every which way and kind of mingle among all the shade things that I'm planting here. Up here we have a oak leaf hydrangea, which I mentioned several videos ago that I would be planting here. This one is called Gatsby Moon. It has really big, beautiful blooms on it. Uh, kind of tiny and falling over right now, so I might stake it, but it's starting to push some new growth from the base, so I might just leave it alone and let it kind of crawl along the ground until it starts producing some upright growth. Uh, but really gorgeous hydrangea. This one will get pretty big, six to eight foot tall and wide, so it's not a small oak leaf a lot of oak leaves get very big there are some smaller varieties on the market um, but this one is not one of them so it will fill this entire spot so while i might plant some perennials around here uh, those will probably eventually have to be moved as this grows on if it does really well in this spot which i think it'll like it i think it'll do pretty well here i think everything i've selected will do well do i have anything else so yes i've got some polygonatum here and these are just various varieties that I dug from my last house before I moved so I could make sure I had them in this garden because these uh, plants specifically can be pretty expensive. They look rough because they've been treated rough since they've been dug. I didn't even throw soil back on them and it's been that way for over two months. So these could take a beating and... If you purchase rare varieties online, they can be kind of expensive. So I think I probably paid like $30 a piece for a tiny stem of these um, several years ago. This is actually a variegated one. It looks like it's losing some of its variegation. Uh, but they do really well if you get them in the ground and get them established. And it's a nice shade plant. Like this one has red stems here, which is really nice and different. It's produced a little berry from its tiny flowers it gets in spring. Um, so I'm really excited to stick these around. I still have the tags for some of them anyway, so I can remember what they are. So it's 52 degrees outside right now, so it's kind of chilly. 
Uh, I'm going to set up the camera, grab some tools, and we are going to get arranging some of these in the bed, and then I'm just going to get them dug. I'm going to be planting everything with my power planter augers that I've had for several years. I actually upgraded and got the big ones last year so I could plant three gallon shrubs. So everything here is smaller than a three gallon. And so I think, and I'm hoping it will go really quickly. I did because we've still not had a whole lot of rain. Water this area last night with a little sprinkler to keep these plants happy. Um, and hopefully loosen up the ground a little bit for me this morning to make this project a little easier. But I'm going to grab a shovel too because I'll probably be moving this variegated grass here because I have a hosta or a hydrangea. I think I'm going to put one of these right here. So it'll be a nice pop of color in the front of the bed that blooms. But let me go gather some things and I'll put you on time lapse and you can watch me arrange this space and kind of plant some stuff. So it's a few uh, hours later, a few like three or four, uh, I had to stop and work on some infrastructure so I stopped my time lapse uh, and I planted a few more things, not many more things, uh, mostly where I planted is in the back back here. Uh, let me go show you what I had to stop and work on quickly. Um, the previous owner to this house, and I don't think they actually put this area in, I think it was the first owner, the original owner of this house had dirt against the brick here um, and that's really bad for of course the inside of the house so you don't want to put dirt up above your brick line that just means water might be coming into the house so i dug down uh, six to twelve inches and put pea gravel there 
uh, and now the level is below the lowest brick um, at the very bottom. You can see it barely covers that one, but it's all pea gravel for sufficient drainage. Uh, and I will just keep that area pea gravel. You won't be able to see it too much by the time some of these things grow in. I also replaced the downspout with these stealth flow ones I found at Home Depot. I really like these. They can be easily covered with mulch and kind of disguised. Uh, they come from the regular downspout and it continues to extend here to this flower bed. I think you can also buy some other adapters to kind of bring that over the corner, which I may do, or I may just kind of let it roll off over the side of these rock. Still thinking about it, but I did put an ostrich fern down here. I had one single one that I picked up locally at a garden center, and those things get really massive, so they can get five to six foot tall, and I wanted some striking texture here next to the patio area where people will be sitting. And then I stuck some Carrick, some other little ferns, hellebores. Uh, I think this uh, hosta I've had for several years in a container outside, uh, and it is autumn frost. That's what that one is. Planted some tiny ferns in this area. This is where the Sun King Aurelia went. Uh, this is an Empress Wu hosta, so the one I had at my last property that gets really big. So I've tried, there's a lot of empty space here, but I've tried to place the hostas appropriately so when they eventually grow up their full size, things won't need to be moved. Then that, that won't always be the case. I've planted some perennials that will have to be moved eventually probably as some of these hostas get bigger, but that will be several years down the road when those have to be moved. And as far as this area, I'm hoping this uh, Pagoda Dogwood Golden Shadows grows up and becomes really nice and beautiful here. Maybe casts a little more shade. You can kind of see here now that I'm shooting in the afternoon um, what kind of sun this bed gets. And so it's still very much kind of a part sun area, uh, shade all the way at least through probably two-ish o'clock. And then when the sun starts coming over that way, it of course gets a little more sun. So. Uh, that's the good thing about this bed, so it's very flexible what I can plant in it. Even things that like a little bit of shade will still probably thrive in this location for me, which is nice. Uh, I did plant some of the bigger, uh, these are lady and red ferns right here, and I had been growing them in containers as well. Uh, and I went ahead and got them in the ground. They're the ones that I think look kind of similar to Boston ferns, and so they're a good alternative for a perennial type Boston fern for you. They get about the same size as Boston ferns potentially can. So those will be really striking right there as well. We also have the Gatsby Moon Hydrangea here, which will eventually get pretty big. I did go ahead and stake it um, because I wanted to kind of correct some of the sideways growth that was going on from where it was growing in its container. Planted a couple hostas over here. Some of that ajuga around the bottom of this crab apple that's gonna be really difficult to plant in so it can kind of cover this area a little bit. Ajuga is great for problem areas too. So I also planted some Hakanakloa along the edge here. So it will spill over as it grows up. And then I planted one down here to kind of make it seem like it spilled over and started growing in this location. I planted a lot of Juga under here, which is a place where I'm probably not going to be planting much of anything else. But this is what I'm talking about. It's a great problem solver. Uh, it will grow perfectly fine here in this location where nothing else really would and will be a great, uh, beautiful, blooming plant in the spring, and then foliage for the rest of the summer that will stay pretty dark. It may be a little more green here in the shade, but when it gets more sun, it turns much darker. There are some solar lights in this tree that I think are actually kind of cute at night. Not all of them work, and I'll probably be pulling them out and finding some alternatives. I also thought about wrapping this entire tree with like Christmas lights and keeping them on there because it has some really nice branch structure uh, or just wrapping it a little bit for some light on this side of the house and some ambiance uh, at night. Now the next steps for this bed, which I'll be taking you along with, is I'm going to be putting drip in this bed so I can stop overhead watering it. Uh, that will not be the next video, most likely. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time to get all of that done, and I might actually have to go buy some more um, drip for this space. I'm not sure yet. I also don't want to do too much too soon until we get the geothermal installed and they come and pull out all of this stuff and enter into the house over here. So I'm going to be planting up this area also in probably late October after they finish that. Don't want to do anything yet because it'll just get trampled and destroyed. So, 
drip in this area and then I'm going to put mulch on it. What I'm going to do for mulch this year, because I don't want to spend any more money uh, necessarily on mulch that's actually technically mulch, I'm going to use the wood chips that I got and spread this entire area with wood chips for some covering and some protection for winter. It won't be as pretty as brown, natural, decomposed mulch, uh, triple shred that I get, but it'll do the job of suppressing weeds in this space, which these beds are gonna need desperately. All of these older beds were not taken care of regularly, so they were not regularly mulched, and I'm sure there are lots of weed seeds just waiting to germinate in the spring. And if I continue to overhead water it, those are going to start germinating. I already noticed some of those germinating in the bed that I planted a few weeks ago. So my priority is to get that mulch down as soon as possible. So over the next week, uh, probably I'll try and shoot that video, add drip to this area. Now every plant won't get a perfect amount of drip. Uh, that's not what you do in these type scenarios. Usually you create like a grid of the uh, brown tubing which has spacing i buy the spacing every 18 inches and you just kind of move it around throughout and some of the bigger things get water and because this is on a slope this water will trickle down to some of these other plants as well and then it will do much better in this area it won't need to be run as often because it's a part sun it's not in blazing sun all day but it'll need enough water to keep it happy and these plants from scorching their first year next year when they're getting sun like they are right now. I had someone mention several weeks ago that I should come through and pressure wash my stone and anything else before I start mulching and uh, planting in here, but I kind of like the aged look of the moss growing on uh, the brick. It's really, I don't know, it's just really magical. It seems like this bed's been here for a long time and when it starts growing in, it'll be really pretty. I will come through and knock all the stuff off the porch though. That does need to be taken care of so it doesn't actually cause any damage, but the actual rock itself, I think I'm going to leave a little mossy because I think it gives it character. And I think I'm going to wrap it up for today and I'm going to go inside and just relax for the rest of the afternoon. I got a lot accomplished today. Uh, I have some leftover plugs and stuff that I'll be planting that I mentioned uh, over there where the air conditioner compressor is, but that'll probably be another month from now. I'm hoping uh, they're able to get the well digger out here and start that process in the next few weeks, but they told us it would probably be mid to late October, which the way the weather's looking, it's getting pretty cold pretty quickly. Uh, this morning it was 52, so I'm hoping we have a really nice fall. I enjoy fall. It's my favorite, but it also means... Uh, we might have a rougher winter, which means I need to get things in the ground sooner rather than later uh, so they can acclimate and root in a little bit before we start hitting freezing temperatures. So I'll judge based on the timeline I'm getting from the air conditioner people if I need to just put these plants in the ground elsewhere and then move them early winter or next spring when they start coming out of the ground. Uh, and if not, I can just put them where their home will be um, if the geothermal goes in as planned earlier hopefully thank you guys for following along i hope you enjoyed this video this is the stuff i like to see so you see the water hose there but when we're relaxing right here this will just be a nice uh, shade bed that we can enjoy that'll be calming uh, i might in the future put a water feature over here uh, as far as like a tiny fountain in this area, just for some sound. The pool itself doesn't create a whole lot of sound. But for now, this is what this bed's going to grow into next year. And I'm really liking what it's looking like so far. Thanks for following along. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. I'll see you soon, guys. Bye.